Hello everyone, my name is Arthur Bunge and today I will give a talk about our new paper Polygon Laplacian Made Simple. Our paper deals with the near discretization of the Laplacian operator for arbitrary particle meshes. The Laplacian plays a prominent role in geometric modeling and related fields and has various applications. It is, for example, involved in solving many PVEs and intimately related to the notion of curvature and signal frequencies. And concerning its discretization, it has been well investigated for triangle meshes, since they are the more or less standard surface representation. And all this attention over the years led to numerous definitions, with the classical cotangent Laplacian emerging as the de facto standard. On the other hand, polygon meshes have received far less attention. This is unfortunate, as they are well used in many fields, for example by artists, since they fulfill properties triangles are simply not able to simulate. However, if triangles are so well investigated, the question arises why not to simply triangulate all the polygon meshes we are faced with and just deal with the consequences? Well, polygon meshes are commonly designed to align to certain surface features and capture symmetries of the shape. For example, quad meshes typically align with the principal curvature directions of a mesh. If we now introduce an arbitrary triangulation, it can break these properties and lead to noticeable artifacts. One could argue that an alternative approach would be to refine the polygon mesh by introducing a new vertex in the middle of each face. This would preserve the symmetry structure, but would also come at the cost of an increase in the finite element system dimension. Previous work tried to tackle the problem of a polygon Laplacian, for example, Zhang et al. They built an operator explicitly for quad meshes by averaging over both triangulations of each quad. Alexa and Badetsky went even a step further because they constructed the current state-of-the-art polygon Laplacian. They circumvented the problem that non-planar polygons in 3D do not really bound a canonical surface patch by considering the projection of the polygon onto the plane that yields the largest projection area. However, their operator involves a parameter from no one called lambda without an obvious interpretation. We wanted to simplify this matter. Instead of inserting a new vertex and altering the mesh altogether, we introduce a virtual vertex in the middle of each face, expressed as the fn combination of the face's vertices. With this additional vertex, we span a refined triangle mesh in each polygon, on which we are then able to compute the cotangent Laplacian. However, we do not stop at this point, but coarsen the refined system back to the original polygon by expressing the vertex functions on the coarse mesh as linear combinations of the head basis functions on the finer one which means we more or less distribute the vertex values of the implicit mesh back to the original nodes with the help of the affine weights. A visualization for these bases can be seen here, at the example of an L-shaped polygon. It is clear that these bases are not equivalent to the triangle the head basis function, as, depending on the weights, they also influence the polygon at the position of the virtual vertex. For example, this point has the weight 0.5 and is clearly affecting the middle, where this point with the weight zero is not. As a short reminder, the cotangent Laplacian on a triangle mesh is constructed as the product of a so-called stiffness matrix S and the inverse of a maze matrix M. The division by the maze matrix gives us the, the point-wise formulation instead of the integrated one. The stiffness matrix is more or less responsible for the name of this discretization as it contains cotangent weights for each vertex of the mesh in its respective one-ring neighborhood. Concerning the mass matrix, there are numerous different definitions. In our case, we choose the non lumped FEM mass matrix. The cotangent Laplacian is so popular since it fulfills a lot of very useful properties. Badetsky and colleagues define several features a discrete Laplacian should fulfill, and so far, none was really able to retain all of them. However, the cotangent Laplacian comes very close, as it fulfills all of them with the exceptions of positive weights. That is why we used the cotangent discretization as the basis for our refined triangle mesh, because we hope to transfer all these nice properties to our new operator as well and make use of its easy and efficient construction. So how do we construct our new operator? To transfer information between the coarse polygon and the refined triangle mesh, we follow the so-called multigrid approach that uses a prolongation and restriction operator to transfer information between res different resoluted grids, with the restriction going from fine to coarse and the prolongation going from coarse to fine. So the first step is to define a prolongation operator that virtually inserts the previously mentioned vertex within each polygon, 
to then span the implicit triangle fan while keeping the original vertices in place. So consider our given polygon. We have six previous phase vertices and want to insert one virtual vertex, for example, the centroid meaning uniform weights. So that the identity matrix retains the original points, where the additional row contains the weight for the representative vertices. For example, polygons of a higher degree would simply lead to more weight entries per row. After computing the coating and version on this mesh, we have to transfer the information back to the original one. Fortunately, the restriction operator is defined as the dual of the prolongation. And since our prolongation is a real value matrix, as I've just shown you, the restriction operator can be simply obtained by taking its transpose, because the dual of a real value matrix is, is transpose. With this, we are then able to define our new stiffness and mass matrix. By computing the stiffness matrix on the triangle mesh, we sandwich it with our prolongation and restriction operators, completely hiding the whole refinement step, and obtain a new matrix that lives on the cross polygon mesh. We follow the same approach for the mass matrix with one minor additional step. Because we observe that diagonalizing the matrix yields generally better results, so we lump the initial matrix to the diagonal one, which now roughly assigns each vertex one third of the surrounding triangle areas. And in the end, the polygon depression is once again given as the product of a stiffness matrix and the inverse of a mass matrix, ready to be used. We are also able to retain one of the key properties of the Laplacian, because mathematically, the Laplacian is defined as the divergence of the gradients of a function, and therefore the stiffness matrix can be divided into a divergence and gradient operator. The cotangent Laplacian already allows this factorization into gradient and divergence, here from all on called d tri and g tri. But our prolongation step gives us a similar expression, leading to a new gradient g tri times our prolongation matrix and a divergence expression, our restriction operator p transpose times d tri. An application for this matter will be shown later. It is important to notice that the finite elements formulation makes the factorization into these two operators so easy and altogether even possible for us, which is not a given for any discretization. The one question remaining is how to define the weights for the virtual vertices. As mentioned before, we want to define a prolongation matrix, but there are many different possibilities to choose for an FN combination. So, what do we want? We want the vertex to be easy to compute, as we have to do it for every phase within the mesh. Additionally, it should be unique, as well as inside the polygon in the planar case. This avoids undesirable triangle flips. For the last point, one of the previously mentioned properties of the Laplacian is linear precision. We can only, argue, we can only guarantee this for our operator, if the vertex is an affine combination, or at least an affine combination, of the phases vertices. So, as often mentioned before, this must be a given. The easiest and fastest solution would be to simply take the mean of all the phases vertices, inserting the so-called centroid. And while this works fine for many polygons, it can unfortunately lead to undesirable triangle flips for non-convex shapes, as the centroid can lie outside of the polygon. A way to conquer this behavior would be to penalize two big surface areas, a property that Dirac Lee energy is directly able to fulfill. However, this point is not uniquely defined. For example, for convex planar polygons, the total area will be identical for every virtual vertex inside the polygon. Instead, we opt for the minimizer of the sum of squared triangle areas of the induced triangle fan. Now the solution is unique, even for planar convex polygons, and using the squared triangle area, the objective function becomes quadratic, which is easy to minimize. So, as a summary, centroid is easy to compute, but can lead to triangle, triangle flips. Minimizer of Dirac Lee energy and absolute triangle areas are not unique, but using the minimizer of the sum of squared triangle areas gives us a very nice solution, which is easy to obtain. So, to summarize, we want to find weights for our faces and vertices that minimize the sum of the squared triangle areas so that the weight itself forms an affine combination. With these weights, we are then able to obtain the minimizing point and the prolongation matrix and have all we need. By construction, the energy is quadratic, which means differentiating with respect to the weights gives us a linear system. 
we add one additional row to the matrix to enforce the partition of unity constraint, which is equivalent to, affine, to having affine ways. And then we are already done. At this point, one could argue that enforcing convex weights would be beneficial because having positive weights seems more or less desirable for our prolongation. But we observed that while having higher computational costs to obtain these convex weights, our operator does not perform better than with affine ones. So we went with the affine combination. As described in the paper, the restriction step does not alter the properties of the cotangent Laplacian, yielding an easy to compute operator for polygon meshes that is able to fulfill the same properties as the standard discretization. So how does our operator perform? In general, we implemented different quantitative and qualitative applications and compared our Laplacian to triangulating the mesh and using the cotangent Laplacian and the state-of-the-art polygon Laplacian, developed by Mark Alexa and Mark Swadetsky. For our first example, we implemented the conformalized mean curvature flow by Misha Kasta. And as you can see, the goal of this step is to transform the mesh into a more and more spherical shape through smoothing and just clearly working well for our operator as, as it obtains a more and more spherical shape with each iteration. Another nice application for our operator is that we are able to interpret meshes with holes as simply having large polygons, as you can see here. With this, we are able to apply geometric processing algorithms as if on a closed surface and do not have to worry about any boundary conditions. And once again, you can see that after some iterations, this mesh also converges to a spherical shape. Parameterization is not far from smoothing. And as you can see, this is also working very well for our operator. We are on the right and the solution obtained through Alexis operators on the left. Although they look very similar, we still have a slightly lower conformal distortion. For quantitative measures, we tested how well our operator is able to reconstruct the mean curvature of a unit sphere, as well as the spherical harmonics, the eigenfunctions of the Laplacian on a sphere. We tested these, measure, uh, these applications on four different test meshes. For example, the fine sphere, which is a high resoluted quad mesh, or the hex sphere, which uh, is constructed out of hexagons. In case of the curvature, we took the root mean squared error for our curvature obtained through the Laplacians versus the ground truth, as the mean curvature on a sphere is always one. Right now, you can see the normalized error of the mean curvature, with our value always being one. Uh, the orange bar represents triangulating the mesh and computing the typical triangle coating Laplacian. And as you can see, our Laplacian yields, yields generally the smallest errors, with the exceptions of the fine sphere. In case of the spherical harmonics, we tested how well our operator is able to reproduce the discrete eigenfunctions sampled on the sphere and compared them to the analytical function values. While our operator does not yield the smallest errors, we are still in a similar range compared to the other ones and can be considered competitive. The last method we are going to show you is the computation of the geodesic distances with the help of the heat flow developed by Keen and Crane et al. The first method, uh, this method involves three major steps. At first, we smooth the impulse function with a certain time step, epsilon, which is recommended to be the mean le edge length of the mesh. Afterwards, we compute the gradients of the solution with the help of the gradient operator I mentioned before. To obtain the geodesic distances, we solve for a scalar field whose gradient matches the vector field G the best. For this, we need the divergence operator. And in practice, the results look like this. Right now, we see a quad mesh forming a head. And if I compute the geodesic distances for the zeroth vertex with our operator, you can see that the results are very nice. If I now do the same for our nexus operator with their recommended hyperparameter being two, the results are clearly distorted. I can now adjust the hyperparameter to different values and obtain different results. And for this specific mesh, 
choosing a parameter around 0 0.3 gives generally the best results. Although they are still a little bit distorted. Uh, Fernando de Jo and Mathieu de Brun mentioned that choosing a larger time step improves the qualitative performance of Alexis Laplacian, which I can do. They suggested the maximum edge length of the mesh, and this clearly enhances the performance, also for larger lambda values. Now, as you can see here. But this also applies for our operator, so the larger time step also enhances our results. And we obtain very nice ESA lines. Now, uh, Crane mentioned in his paper that by running the heat flow for progressively larger time steps, one obtains smooth approximations of the geodesic distances. Therefore, enhanced qualitative results come always at the cost of accuracy. An important factor is that our operator is not equivalent to simply inserting the virtual vertex into the mesh. In this graphic, you can see the results obtained with our operator while inserting the virtual point and computing the geodesic distances with the cotan divergence and gradient lead to noticeable artifacts. To compare our quantitative performance, we tested the geodesic distances on different planes since we are able to compare them to the Euclidean distances as the ground truth. And once again, on most of the meshes, our operator is able to yield the smallest errors. And in general, it's able to outperform Alexa's Laplacian. And as mentioned before, this does not change with the usage of a higher time step. To summarize this presentation, we were able to define a new discrete Laplacian for polygon meshes with the help of a virtual vertex per polygon. All the refinement steps are hidden from the user thanks to our prolongation and restriction matrices. It inherits all the desirable properties of the cotangent Laplacian is still easy to compute and has no parameters that have to be adjusted. An additional nice feature is that our theory is consistent with the finite elements exterior calculus. With the help of the Whitney basis functions, we are able to define a prolongation operator for 0, 1, and 2 forms, enabling us to define the respective Hodgster operators. Constructing our Laplacian is also faster than our Lexus state-of-the-art polygon Laplace which is a nice detail for real-world applications. So, if you want to try our new Laplacian, we published the source code on GitHub under the following link, and thank you for your attention.